a remarkable political moment to share with you. You know that um, former Vice President Dick Cheney's daughter, Liz Cheney, has formed a neoconservative pressure group, right? That's the ostensible reason why she gets on TV so much these days. Remarkably, on one of those myriad TV appearances, someone actually confronted Liz Cheney about something she's been arguing for that makes no sense. Amazing. Somebody confronted her. It finally happened. I want to show our viewers a little bit of this ad that you all are running uh, in the wake of this, hitting the president for a tardy uh, response uh, to all this. You show him playing golf 24 uh, hours later, the president coming out and finally saying something uh, another day uh, after that, 46 hours later. But what already is apparent is that there was a mix of human and systemic failures that contributed to this potential catastrophic breach of security. Arguing that uh, the responses were much better under President Bush, yet as many Democrats and others have pointed out, President Bush waited, I think, six days before doing much about Richard Reid, the shoe bomber. Uh, well, I think that you've got to go back here and look at um, the way this president has dealt with terror since he's been in office. And the point of that ad was this notion that you cannot win a war if you're treating it as sort of an inconvenient sidelight. Wow, what a rhetorical duck. It's like she didn't even hear the question. Let's see that again on the instant replay. President Bush waited, I think, six days before doing much about Richard Reid, the shoe bomber. Uh, well, I think that you've got to go back here and look at... Okay, stop. Freeze it. All right, th this is the key part of the interview. Liz Cheney, why are you hitting President Obama for waiting four days before he talked about an attempted attack when President Bush waited six days? That's the question, and it's a good one. So here's her answer. Now, watch her mouth as she opens it and closes it and words come out. Um, the way this president has dealt with terror since he's been in office. That's it, right there. That ad was the she gets asked about President Bush and his record on responding to terror, the and then Obama she completely ignores the question and starts talking about Obama again. This president has dealt with terror since he's been in office. Ta-da! She just completely ignores the question about the double standard for Bush and Obama. Just completely ignores it. And the interview plods on and they move on. It's amazing. And for the record, the president was in front of cameras on Monday, December 28th, talking about the Christmas Day bombing, which according to my math is three and not four days after the attempted attack on Christmas Day. She was implying four. I, I, I don't know if Ms. Cheney will ever feel a need to answer questions about the things that her pressure group does, but the questions worth asking about that group and its activities are mounting. For example, there was their pseudo-mini documentary about the people of Standish, Michigan, about how Standish was being railroaded by evil politicians who wanted to flood their little town with prisoners from Guantanamo that these folks in Standish really didn't want. I would love to hear Liz Cheney explain how she squares the people of Standish being forced into this mini-movie plot with the fact that the city council of Standish, Michigan, unanimously passed a resolution asking for Guantanamo prisoners to be sent there. I don't think she's ever going to feel like she needs to explain herself, but I am curious. There was also this ad released by Cheney's group in October, deriding this very TV network for criticizing Liz Cheney but refusing to debate her, which was very awkward because we kept asking her to come on this show to, you know, debate, and she kept turning us down. I understand a lot of people say no to being on this show, but not a lot of them do so while claiming that MSNBC is afraid to debate them. Be not afraid, Miss Cheney. I promise I will not bite. So far, the Liz Cheney pressure group has demanded to debate people who are perfectly willing to debate her, but she won't do it. They have tried to get us to pity the poor, pushed-around people of a small town in Michigan who asked for what Cheney wants us to pity them for. And they've attacked President Obama for something that President Bush did. If that were my record, I would want to be good at ducking questions, too. Joining us now is Chris Hayes, Washington editor for The Nation. Chris, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for being here, Rachel. I was impressed with your telestrator skills. <laughs> it took me sort of all day, I will admit, <laughs> to figure out how to do that. But I, I just felt like, wait, this was this incredible moment. Nobody ever makes Liz Cheney, uh, sort of holds her to account for the double standard in just about everything that they've done since she founded this pressure group. And it was this great moment because she got asked, but then she didn't answer. And I, I wonder if that's if she just knows that she's good at evading questions and that makes her more confident at putting things out that have double standards. 
Well, I, I think that w what makes Liz Cheney confident is the fact that there is no earthly reason that anyone should be listening to Liz Cheney on anything, other than the fact that she is the progeny of a a an alleged war criminal. I mean, well, the, 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 she is able to go out there and spout about whatever it is she wants to spout about because the Washington establishment has incredibly futile conceptions of what earns someone a spot on the Sunday show. But aside from that, you know, I, there's thousands of people that are as qualified as Liz Cheney to talk about anything. And I mean across the political spectrum. Um, the only reason she is there is because she's Liz Cheney, she's Dick Cheney's daughter. I think that, you know, kind of insulates you from, from worrying about the kind of petty concerns of, of answering questions or logic or anything like that. After she did start getting um, quite a bit of face time, after she and her father both started speaking out very early on in the Obama administration, she did form this organization, yeah. Keep America Safe is the name of the group. What is, what is its purpose? What is it for? I, I honestly think, I mean, there's two things. One, it's, it's, it, it, its purpose is to demagogue terrorism and to, and to kind of pursue this uh, terribly uh, atavistic view of, of, of the war on terror that Dick Cheney had. But, but, but really, I really think that it is there so that there's some putative reason other than her being Dick Cheney's daughter to put her on the TV. Like all this, like at, when when keeping America safe uh, got up and running, all of a sudden there was like a new Chiron underneath her that 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 seemed sort of more less embarrassing and more credible than just you know Dick Dick Cheney's daughter. I mean, I was doing research, I was trying to find the internet if there's any tabulation of actually how many points that they've they've purchased of advertising because I don't even it's unclear how much they've actually spent and where, and that's in incredibly hard to come by. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I don't even know like whether these are the kinds of ads that people produce. So that they get rerun on on television shows, or actually they're, they're actually doing anything at the, at the first order level that they say they're doing. A, a new CNN poll that came out today um, on the issue of terrorism uh, said a majority of Americans, it was like 57 percent, approve of the way that President Obama responded to the Christmas Day attack. And in, in addition to the Liz Cheney stuff, there was a unified screaming yes. chorus of Republicans yes. hitting him over this issue. Did yes. it just did it just not work? Did they not do enough? What happened? You know, I think you're, I mean, I think the 57%, given how just colossally, earth-shatteringly stupid the, the, the news cycle was in the midst of, of the Christmas Day, a, a, you know, attempted underpants bomb, that that's a really heartening number. Because I do think that everybody is kind of operating on the, on the Republican side, whether it's Pete Hoekstra or Peter King or Liz Cheney or whoever is operating off this old playbook in which you kind of press these buttons and the public reacts in this Pavlovian way. And I, I do think think that, that that number, you know, these polls, who knows how deeply that's registering. But I do think that it shows that that kind of press and response has weakened over time. And I think that's really a positive thing. And I hope that Democrats take note that they don't need to be in this defensive crouch uh, whenever something like national security or the, or the air sats war on terror comes comes along. I think it also means for, for, for journalists that they can get out of the defensive crouch, too, that it's OK to ask follow up questions and point out uh, double standards and those things. And uh, nothing bad will happen. Absolutely. Hopefully. Chris Hayes, Washington editor of The Nation, uh, tonight gets points for using atavistic. Thank you very much for joining us. Always I'm always trying to bring one to you, Rachel. I know. You're our vocabulary gnome. <laughs> okay. That's why we love you, Chris. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs>